about stimulus control. Now we've talked about it, and you know, in, in this case, the example here, the, the visual example is pretty clear. Uh, you know, the, the 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 red light person thing there. That's a discriminative stimulus saying, um, as long as you you know, if you stay in place, you will be reinforced by avoiding getting run over by a car, right, or something to that effect. Um, and the green one says you'll be reinforced for crossing the street. Okay, so you have two different stimuli. Um, both of those are discriminative stimulus, and they signal to you that a particular behavior will now be reinforced. Okay? Um, not, you know, not all behavior is maintained by the exact same consequences, right? So in different situations, and sometimes behavior isn't reinforced at all in those new situations or different situations. So keep in mind, we do have to talk about generalization and all these other things, and we're gonna we're gonna get into that. Um, but the basic idea here is that again, what maintains your behavior in one setting something else maybe may be maintaining it in a different setting. Right? Um, so reacting to, uh, I'm trying to think here, oh cigarette smoking can be a good one. Um, what is a signal for cigarette smoking in one environment, you know, in, in one environment that the reinforcers for smoking a cigarette may be escape from whatever task you're working on. In another environment smoking a cigarette may be reinforced by access to your friends. So the behavior is still the same, smoking a cigarette, the context has changed, and the reinforcers have changed as well. So let's get into the true definition here. Right? Behavior that is reinforced in the presence of one stimulus, and not in another, will come under stimulus control. And so that's the definition. Behavior that is reinforced in the presence of one stimulus, and not in another stimulus, will come under stimulus control. So in other words, you get reinforced for standing on the sidewalk in the presence of the red light, okay, and you do not get reinforced for walking across the street in the presence of the red light. Okay. In the presence of the green light, you get reinforced for walking across the street, okay, um, and you do not get reinforced for just waiting. Right? Again, this is about the discriminative stimulus signaling that reinforcers are available. So what happens in one particular context is not a guarantee that it'll happen in another context. And, um, and more if we want to get into this like from a mathematical perspective, you know, stimulus control is simply the degree of correlation between a particular response and a, and a particular stimulus. And so an SD is signaling that a particular behavior is going to be a good thing to do right now. Uh, that's what we're talking about with stimulus control. So if you start to think about your behaviors that are under stimulus control in the classroom, and we'll talk about some of this, but the idea is that you got a ton of behaviors that you do in the classroom that you don't do anywhere else, and that's because they're reinforced in the classroom only, right? Um, think about raising your hand, you know, or listening to lecture. Those are things that you don't often do in other places, but in the classroom, they're perfectly acceptable, and they're, in fact, they're you know, required for the most part. So you do have that stimulus control going on. Crossing the street is stimulus control, you know, and it, we can even talk about crossing the street without worrying about the lights, right? So, I mean, think about it for a second. What's the one rule that you were always told growing up right, to do right, before you cross the street? Is it look both ways, right? Look one way, look the other. Now, by the way, there's a funny story about that, and I'm going to come back to that in a second. But um, so you look left and look right, and off you go. Okay. So the looking left and looking right, what you're identifying is. Um, discriminative stimuli. Are there cars present? If there's no cars present, so the lack of stimuli there, all right, or the distance to those stimuli, all right, to the cars, will signal if it's okay to cross or not. So there's an example of stimulus control. The funny story here is that looking left first, then it's appropriate, then looking right is appropriate, but only if people drive on the right side of the road. I learned that lesson the hard way the first time I was in South Africa. Um, where they drive on the other side of the road. And so what did I do? I went across the street and I looked left. And then I looked right and realized that I about stepped into traffic because as soon as I looked left, the, there was no cars coming. Well, that's because cars don't come from that direction when you're stepping onto the street. They're coming, you know, if the, the lane that's closest to you, they're coming from the right side, not from the left side. So um, in other countries, you actually have to look the other direction first, right? So uh, what happened there was a case of generalization, right? Where my behavior of looking left and looking right to cross the street generalized um, but it failed, right? There was no reinforcer available for that. So um, my behavior came under stimulus control. I started to discriminate, and I learned that when in South Africa or Australia or wherever it is that I've gone there, people drive on the right side of the road, or on the left side of the road, you then actually look the other direction first. So you look right first, then you look left. 
right? So right is the close lane to you. That's where the traffic is going to be coming from. So it's a little backwards, but my behavior is now under stimulus control.